думали гонители в Западной Европе в начале нового века, когда уничтожали храмы и монастыри, думая, что включив политическую культуру, un grande dolore nel cuore per il peggioramento della situazione nell'Ucraina. Ancora una volta la pace di tutti è minacciata da interessi di parte. Vorrei appellarmi a quanti hanno responsabilità politiche perché facciano un serio esame di coscienza davanti a Dio This Wednesday marks the first day of Lent in the Catholic and Orthodox Christian faiths, and with war raging in Eastern Europe, question about faith, faith leaders, and world conflict is at the forefront of many people's minds. So let's take a deep dive into some context about the religious nature of this conflict, where the Catholic Pope, the Patriarch of Moscow, and the Ukrainian Orthodox leader, Metropolitan Onofiri, stand, as well as Vladimir Putin and the question of Ukrainian sovereignty. To set the stage, a little, Patrick Marin asks in the National Catholic Reporter, between Ash Wednesday and Easter, who among our spiritual leaders can restore trust and guide the adversaries toward peace? So first off, we should clarify just who the religious leaders are in the affected area of Europe, because it's a bit confusing. Stay with me here. Pope Francis is the leader of the Catholic Church, who resides in the Vatican and oversees adherence to Roman Catholicism. There was a famous split centuries and centuries ago, and in the East, the Orthodox Church reigns supreme with each country having their own leader, largely unified under the overall guidance of the Patriarch of Constantinople. The current Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church is Bishop Kirill, who leads the largest number of Orthodox Christians in the world, in Russia. A big question you may have is about the nature of the relationship of these two figures. Do they get along? The answer, historically, has been no. In 2016, Pope Francis became the first Catholic pontiff to meet a Russian Patriarch traveling to Cuba to meet the person he then called his, quote, brother. That's a story for another time, but for our purposes, let's focus on what the Patriarch is saying now. On the evening of February 24th, Patriarch Kirill of Moscow offered an address that pretty blatantly parroted Russian state propaganda, which forbids describing the current conflict as a war, an invasion, or an attack. Putin is notably also a baptized and practicing member of the Russian Orthodox Church and supports Patriarch Kirill's view that a strong national church is part of the cultural and spiritual unity of Russia. And yesterday, Kirill said that Moscow's opponents in Ukraine are, quote, evil forces. But as I mentioned, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is led by a different person, Metropolitan Onufri. On October 24th, the Metropolitan issued a surprisingly bold defense of Ukrainian sovereignty, coupled with a harsh condemnation of Russian aggression. So it seems as if the two figureheads are completely at odds. In 2014, Henry Kissinger, I know, I know, just go with me for a second. Kissinger wrote in the Washington Post that Ukraine is divided between, quote, the West largely Catholic and speaking Ukrainian versus, quote, the East largely Russian Orthodox and speaking Russian. Consequently, any attempt by one wing of Ukraine to dominate the other would lead eventually to civil war or breakup. So this is where religion really comes in. The observation also brings Pope Francis and the Roman Catholic Church back into the mix. Francis has been publicly supportive of the Ukrainian people, dedicating much of his messaging in the lead-up to Lent Holy Week with pleas for an end to the invasion. With these three hugely influential faith leaders on opposite sides of the divide, things aren't looking good for a reconciliation. But, as I mentioned, the first time leaders of the Catholic and Orthodox churches met was just six years ago, so there certainly is still a chance for the unprecedented to happen. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on all platforms at carojohnson917.